Welcome to MSP Voice, the weekly show for MSPs by MSPs. Brought to you by CloudBerry, the number one cross-platform cloud backup. Learn more at cloudberrylab.com. This is MSP Voice. Hello and welcome to MSP Voice. This is episode number 42. Got a great guest today, Michael Baker with Atiba. I'm out of Nashville. I met him at the Robin Robin Sales and Marketing Bootcamp. Um, last month, so we had a great discussion. Uh, so de definitely take a listen and uh, stick to the end. Housekeeping, mspvoice.com, your source for all things MSP Voice. Uh, sign up there, put in your name and email, and you'll get and subscribe, and you'll get notices every time we post some new content to mspvoice.com. Uh, coming up this week, we do have another in our webinar series with Tech Blog Builder. Uh, so looking forward to that one. So Matthew Rodella is going to um, talk about how to build an effective blog post um, for, for MSPs. Uh, so it should be very educational and informative. Also, don't forget, we've got a Facebook group. Um, there's a Facebook link there on the mspvoice.com page, as well as Twitter. So uh, follow us, um, join our group, and find out all things MSP Voice related. Okay, so with that, now we can jump into some of the... Uh, the news of the week or the, the, the articles for, for basically for this week, for last week, um, we got a couple of things coming up. Uh, first off is um, Office Depot. We've talked about them a couple of times, but um, this one I found interesting is they got fined $25 million for bogus virus scans. So the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, fined them um, basically because they were scanning people's computer and telling them that they had malware and it had to be remediated and charging them up to $300 to fix it when nothing actually was wrong with the computer. Um, and it, it comes about, they were using a, a scan. Um, it was a, it was a fake, it was a fake scan called PC health check. Um, it was licensed by support.com. And apparently, you know, it said it was running a virus scan, but what it actually did is ask the per people four questions. And if they answered yes to any of those questions, then they said, oh, you've got malware, we've, we've got to fix your computer. Um, and the questions were, were pretty vague. Um, like, is the computer running slowly? Does it receive virus warnings? Does it crash often? Or does it display pop-up ads? So they answered yes to any one of those questions. Guess what? 300 bucks, we'll fix your computer. Um, so, Office Depot got fined. Also, support.com agreed to a $10 million settlement with the FT, FTC over the alleged scheme as well. Um, so again, while there might be viruses and, and you know, there, there are good scanning software, don't, don't do bogus scans and, and trick your customers into paying money because somebody may come back on you and find out you're doing it and get you. So be careful of that. Um, next up is something we here at CloudBerry are excited about. It's Amazon Deep. Uh, Glacier Deep Archive. Um, so it's a new S3 storage class. Um, you know, we, we all know Glacier, it's cheap and, you know, but as long as you don't want the data off too fast. Well, Deep Archive is even cheaper. In fact, it's much cheaper. Um, and the, the, the link here is to a blog post, Amazon uh, blog post kind of explaining about it. Um, and they, they've got, they got a whole, um, whole article that talks about how to set it up, uh, where to go through, so what are some of the use cases for it. Um, essentially, you know, if you need to, if your customers can't, you can't delete it, but they never access it, then Deep Archive is, is where you want to go. Um, at the end of the blog post, there's uh, a link to the pricing. Um, I've got that highlighted here. Um, it's 0 0.00099 cents per gigabyte. Um, so that's extremely cheap because um, Glacier is 0 0.004 cents per gigabyte. Um, so you can see how much cheaper it is. Um, there are some limitations, obviously, um, you know, it, it, it might take days to get the data back if you need it. Uh, but again, for those customers that maybe have a compliance need to, to store their data, um, it's a new cheaper option. And our sponsors, Cloudberry, want us to, to mention that yes, Cloudberry products do support that. Um, had some releases last week uh, to support that, ar that new archive tier deep storage. So next up is another interesting article in terms of security. So um, Continuum, who you may know in the MSP space, um, they commissioned a study. And what that study found was that small businesses are willing to switch MSPs for better security. Um, so there's a lot of interesting findings in this, but you know, essentially if you're not, you know, 
telling your customers that you, you've got the best security solution out there. Um, if someone else comes along and says, hey, we've got a, a good security solution, you know, they might say, hey, you know what, security is important to them. You, just because they're a small business does not mean they're not concerned about security, they're not concerned about ransomware, all these types of things. Um, you know, we, we've seen, you know, M M SSPs are, are, are on the rise. There's a huge market out there for that. Um, so definitely something to consider for your customers is make sure that, you know, you're providing security services and they know that you've got the best security services. Um, so that way, if someone else comes along, they don't say, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll check these guys out um, because they are willing to switch. So check that out. Really interesting study. Thanks to Continuum for doing that. And with that, we will now get into episode 42. Um, again, Michael Baker with Atiba. Fun interview. And I'll talk to you next week. Hello and welcome. Today, I am joined by Michael Baker with Atiba. Um, Engaging Solutions, I guess, is, is part of your tagline um, out of uh, yeah. Nashville. Uh, we actually met a couple weeks ago at the Robin Robbins conference. That's correct. Yeah, it was great to meet you guys and appreciate the invite to come join you. Yeah, so Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do there? Absolutely. So I am the National Director of Business Development for Atiba. So I am responsible for, uh, as the title says, going out there and finding, finding some new prospects and new clients and bringing them in. And uh, once they are in, making sure that they are happy and satisfied with all their services. Okay. Now, um, you know, Atiba, you could do more than just managed services, though, too. I noticed you do like application development and um, mobile apps and those types of things, too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, uh, we're very unique um, uh, firm here. So we're, we're, we've been around for 27 years. This is our wow. 27th year, uh, still privately owned. And, and when we started, uh, basically we started off as a, as a consulting firm. And of course, 27 right. years ago, that was fax machines and printers and things yeah. like that. But uh, essentially to the, to the uh, core of uh, how the owner JJ Rosen uh, runs the business, he's, he loves to just help people out. And so as tech grew, um, people would ask him that he already had clients, Hey, can you also do this? And he, he would do it. And so, 27 years later, we are a full service tech suite. So we have, of course, the managed services, network services department, uh, software development, uh, websites, and mobile apps, and anything that you can think of that falls underneath that. So software is everything from mm -hmm. custom to, to uh, data, uh, big data, all those type of things, websites, uh, digital marketing, SEO, design, development, uh, all of that. And of course, same thing with mobile apps. Okay. And now, so you said you're the, uh, you're the national director of business um, development. Now, does that mean, is that part of sales? Are you working on partnerships? What's that, what's that entail for your day to day? <laughs> uh, a little bit of everything. So, um, so with that, obviously the, the core of that is sales, of okay. course, uh, yeah. going out and finding, finding new clients. Um, but I'm, I'm also of the belief that uh, when you're doing sales, um, doing business development, a lot of that is marketing and building partnerships and growing relationships. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of, a lot of networking. I do a lot of getting out, uh, being part of the community, uh, just trying to lack of better terms, be kind of the face of Atiba out and about. Cause obviously with okay. software developers and engineers, uh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're busy working and they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're nose to the grind. And so, um, it's a little bit of everything. I handle uh, a lot of the social media for Atiba okay. right now, all the social media marketing, the LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. So it's a little bit of everything. Okay. No, that, that, that's great. So, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, one little thing. You've, you've got a, your hand in a, in a couple of different areas. Um, you know, social media. So how, does, how, how do you guys approach social media to maybe attract new customers? I mean, is there, do you kind of have, I don't know if you have a formula or anything magic, but you know, is there <laughs> something that you, you find has been effective to, to help you attract new customers using social media? Yeah, I've, I'm actually a huge um, uh, proponent of using LinkedIn mm -hmm. uh, a lot. Uh, and I do consider that social media. Uh, some people think yep. social media, they think fa Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or something like that. I think LinkedIn is very much social media. Mm -hmm. um, people, 
would use it more for business, but um, I use LinkedIn quite a bit. It is okay. a huge driver for business for me. Um, outside of that, uh, the Instagram and Facebook, the way that we utilize that is to um, kind of bring a lighter side uh, to, to the business and not so much, you know, LinkedIn can be, tend to be a little bit more salesy on yeah. some of the things that I post more informational, uh, with Instagram, Facebook, there's limited, uh, space obviously. Mm -hmm. And so, so try to do fun things, uh, you know, it jokes that just kind of catch people eyes. Um, just this past week, uh, uh, so we're the official IT partner for the National Area Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And so with that, we had a table at the governor's address that just happened last week. Hmm. So we invited um, 10 people to join us. And so one of the social media posts that I had, um, the way that it worked out was our my entire table for Atiba was nothing but a strong, powerful uh, uh, female community leaders. So okay. executives and, and and movers and shakers in, in Nashville that were all female. So that was really cool. So what I got to do was take a couple pictures at the governor's address, but also take a picture of all of them without yeah. me in it mm -hmm. and post that. And so that was really neat. We got a huge response on social media because people see that they see the, the female empowerment of, of executives and movement and, and community leaders in Nashville and those are the types of things that I like to do on social media. So okay. it's a Tiba, um, and it's, people see it, they see the Tiba logo and all of that, but it's, it's more of, hey, this is what we're doing. We're out and about. We're, we're doing these things. Here's the things that we support, stuff like that. Yeah, I know. And, and so, I mean, you know, so, with social media, a lot of it is about branding, right? And so, you know, the mm -hmm. more things you can do to get people familiar with your brand, especially if it's local, you know, some, something local like that, um, you know, is, is, is even better because then people are like, oh, yeah, I've heard of them. Um, <laughs> I don't know where, but I <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, people tend to with us, people tend to uh, recognize our little slogan a little bit more, which is half geek, half human. Yeah. Um, so they'll, they'll say, oh, I, I have heard the half geek, half human before. The Atiba can be um, a little bit harder because people may not know how to pronounce it, but they are like half geek, half human. I know that. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I like on your website too, how you have, you have inhuman and in geek. Um, so yeah. Like, <laughs> um, you got all the acronyms. Well, it's great. Geek. Yeah, exactly. And I, we do that on, on purpose so that uh, if you're a uh, CTO or IT director and you really want to get into super geeky talk and really yeah. get into the, the nuts and bolts of something, we can. We have the ability to do that. But if you're, if you're a business owner and you're trying to handle this by yourself and, and you're, you have questions and you don't want somebody who's going to give you an answer that you're just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. You want to be able to talk to them in human terms mm -hmm. as to something that they're going to be able to understand. Definitely. So you, know, you talk about some of your customers. Do you guys specialize in any particular verticals um, or is, you know, is it, or you don't discriminate? <laughs> uh, we don't discriminate. And, and a lot of that comes with, with uh, going back to the type of business we are where we have a full suite of solutions. Mm -hmm. And because of that, our clients end up being that way also, because if we're doing, uh, let's say, software development for, for a construction company, uh, you know, creating some specialized software for their business, uh, they may end up being a managed services client because they say, hey, we really like what you guys do and we'll, we'll let you do this as well. Yeah. And the same thing if, we're, if we have a uh, healthcare company, of course, we have several healthcare companies mm -hmm. um, being in Nashville. Uh, <laughs> but if we have a healthcare company and, and we're already doing the managed services for them, then we're in, we understand their business, and they may say, hey, we were really thinking of redoing our website. We're really thinking about um, how could we make our business run more efficiently. So we end up yeah. with software development stuff and mobile app development through those. So because of that, we end up being spread quite a bit. So we are, we are definitely uh, um, we are non-discriminatory when it comes to what type of businesses we work with. Yeah, that's good. You know, because, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of MSPs that, that go very – very deep in a particular vertical, you know, or, or very narrow, I guess you could say. And then others like yourselves, 
um, you know, that, that are much broader. And you know, I've talked to others too that offer software development services like you guys do. And you know, it's the same thing. It's like, hey, if you offer software development services, you might get MSP contracts, but if you have an MSP contract, then that could lead to software development projects as well. So it's kind of a rounding out your, your, your total solution offering instead of just being very narrow in, in one particular technology field. Right. And I think the, the, the big uh, crux for that is the fact that, you know, at what point, if you want to create that niche, mm -hmm. um, you know, 27 years in the business already, <laughs> it's like, if you, if we decided to create just a niche market, um, and we, there are certain things that we kind of focus on a little bit, but that, mm -hmm. but at what point would you say as, as a business, no to any of the other business that's coming to you and asking you if they that you can help them at what point do you say no we're, we're focusing on this and that's just not our nature uh to to do that we we want to help if we're, if we're a good fit then we want to help okay now how long so you know atiba has been around for 27 years have you been the whole 27 years with them or no um i've actually uh been with them for two years now two years okay. as of uh basically today, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, happy, yeah. happy anniversary, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Gold watch and everything now. Okay. So what, but um, <laughs> had you worked in the managed services area or, or technology services arena before c coming to Atiba? Uh, no, I actually, um, when I, I've been in Nashville now for six years. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Nashville, I worked in what's called a PEO industry. Uh, so it's outsourced HR for, for lack of better terms. Okay. Um, and so um, I was working in that industry for about four years, two separate companies. And uh, I, I got introduced. I worked with a lot of technology companies. Mm -hmm. Don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but in, in that industry, mm -hmm. Your, your, your number one best client is a tech company um, for, for various reasons. So okay. I, I, would, I would chase after a lot of tech companies, um, <laughs> but I didn't know it like, like I do now. And I got introduced to JJ one day and, and we hit it off and, and our, uh, our thoughts and, and uh, methodologies lined up. Uh, with how we go after clients, how we treat clients, um, and all of that. And so once we hit it off, uh, it was it was a smart move for me to join them. I was really excited to join them and see what, where we can take a team over the next 27 years. Okay. So what's, you know, what's your favorite part about being in, in IT services and, and, you know, doing what you're doing now? Um, I, I think the biggest thing, and it does carry over from what I was doing before, uh, is, is being able to talk with business owners, okay. um, and decision makers, uh, and being able to sit down and try, try to come up with solutions that will actually help their business. Uh, how, how can we, if, if you have a business and you feel like you've maxed out at 10 years and you just can't grow anymore, uh, what can we do to help you grow? Uh, is that through any of our services? Is that going to be through IT? Is it through software development? Is there something that we could create that would help your business run more efficiently? Or is that, once again, going back to what I was saying about the networking and being out in the community, is yeah. that through connecting you with, with one of our other partners and saying, hey, you need help with this? That's not one of our core services, but I know somebody really great that you should meet that can help you out. Um, so, so I think that's, that's the most fun I have. Uh, okay. Of course, being a, only two years in the technology world, um, every day I, I'm learning something new. And as soon as I learn it, it changes. Uh, so that's <laughs> also exciting to me as well. It's, it's, it's Excuse me. Uh, going back to what you say, you know, we're, uh, we're unique. So I, I'm not coming in and working for strictly an MSP or strictly yeah. software development. So there wasn't this nice manual about software <laughs> development or a nice manual about MSP. It was, it was uh, get out there and good luck. And the best way you'll learn is when somebody asks you a question, you find out the answer if yeah. you don't know already. So it, it's exciting because every day I learn something new. Oh, that's great. Um, what's the, uh, you know, maybe some of the things that, that frustrate you, what's, what's maybe the worst part about the services being an IT services? <laughs> um, uh, a little bit of the same thing. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know until, until you come across the situation. You, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so not, not knowing everything can be frustrating sometimes. Um, uh, I think the, uh, I don't know if it would be a frustration, but it's, it's really, um, it's, it, it's more of the challenge. Uh, once again, kind of a fun challenge of, uh, getting people to understand that where they are, uh, the status quo that is getting over the status quo. Yeah. You know, I don't, a lot of people say, who's your biggest competitor? I say status quo is yeah. my answer. And the reason why is just getting people to understand if they've been in business for 20 plus years that, Hey, there may be a better way to doing this. If you're willing to have a conversation and just, just talk about it, we may be able to find something that really help will help you make turn your business into something that will be sustainable for you know the next 20 30 years yeah sometimes your sometimes your biggest competition is what we call do nothing right so yes <laughs> so you're, it, exactly like, well, who, are you, who are you competing with it's like well we got this vendor this vendor but then there's also this whole do nothing thing out there where if they decide not to do anything then nobody's going to win um so exactly we've been doing it this way for 20 years and it, and it's and it's working just fine why would we change exactly uh, people get set in their ways. Uh, we all, we all do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so thinking about technologies a little bit and, you know, stuff that's, whether it's consumer or business related, what technologies are you most excited about today? Or even stuff on the oh. horizon? Um, I think, um, you know, some of the things that we're, we're do dealing with right now, uh, technologies is, um, uh, thinking about a little bit more about virtual desktops and, okay. and where that, that will go. Um, we've, we've got a client right now that has a strong, um, goal of rapid growth mm -hmm. and that rapid growth will be, uh, purchasing locations around the country. Mm -hmm. So, so if the growth goes the way that they're hoping it to go, um, then down the line, the the solution may be virtual desktop for them. So I think that's something that's really exciting to to look at and think about where how that will change and that how that can help businesses. Um, on the personal side, of course, any of the any of the virtual reality stuff is always neat and always always unique. It's it's interesting to see how much that will actually take hold yeah. um, in certain industries uh, like um, uh, engineering and architecture and, and some of the cool stuff that's out there that where they can actually physically with VR kind of go in and, and move and build stuff, uh, in a virtual environment. I think that's pretty neat. Okay. What about technologies that worry you? Maybe, uh, keep you up at night. <laughs> um, oh, that's a good question. I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that, that worry me. I mean, I guess the, I guess the thing that uh, if you want to uh, technology, I think technologies, uh, anything that would fall in the category of technologies that would uh, take away from uh, the human element okay. um, of, of that, that personality that going with a lot of what we've been talking about. I'm, I'm, I like the relationship building and I like a lot of that stuff. So I think, uh, the things that worry me is, is do we get too technologically advanced where we take mm -hmm. away that human interaction? Um, so those would be the things that kind of worry me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, they're, they're making a lot of strides in artificial intelligence and it's not unsure if it's good or bad. <laughs> right. Some, some cases it might be good, but, but, um, uh, you know, in other cases it's, it's, it, it, if you're losing that face to face, the breaking bread, type of relationship, mm -hmm. then, then I think we're losing a lot as a, as a society. No, no, I, I definitely agree with you. We're, we're all seem to be more glued to our phones and, and looking up and, and talking to people these days. Right. <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> it is now time for the rapid fire round. Um, so all right. six questions. It's, you know, don't think, don't think too hard, just whatever answer comes to your mind and that uh, will go from there. So you ready? Okay. We'll try. All right, first up, Apple or Android? Apple. Mac, Linux, or Windows? Uh, personally, Mac, work, Windows. Okay. 
uh, cloud services, Amazon, Azure, Google, or something else? All of the above. Okay. Um, thinking about backups, backup locally to the cloud or both? Uh, both. Okay. Should you always virtualize? Yes or no? No. Okay. And finally, which is worse, printer support or vendor cold calls? <laughs> Uh, um, since I don't have to, uh, I have, since I don't have to deal with the printer support, I'll say vendor cold calls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was wondering, I'm like, yeah, you, you're, you're in business development. You don't, you don't, you're not, uh, you're not getting your hands dirty every day messing with these. Printers. No, I get to pass that along. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so before we finish up here, any, any parting words, any tips, tips, and advice for, for, for others out there that are, you know, looking to maybe replicate some of the success that you've had or, you know, just getting into business, any pearls of wisdom? Yeah, I, I think, uh, and as I've said this quite a bit throughout our conversation today, I, I think uh, the big thing is, is, is don't uh, let the relationships fall to the wayside. Uh, relationships are, are very big for us here at Atiba. Um, we've got a reputation, our, our owner here in Nashville, a lot of people know him. Um, uh, in part because of a lot of the philanthropy work that he does. Okay. We actually started our own nonprofit called Geek Cause that is Great. specifically set up for other nonprofits. Uh, so I think uh, no matter how much you, how many hours you want to work per day, no matter uh, how much stuff, whatever you're doing to put into your business, uh, don't let the relationships uh, get pushed to the side because relationships are super important and they're, they're what people will truly, truly remember you by. Great. That is, that is some, some great advice. So Michael, thank you so much for, for being a guest today. It was, uh, you know, nice to meet you in person. Um, and it's, and it's great to have you as a guest here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having us on. Great to meet you as well. When you get back, we'll have to hit up some of those restaurants we talked about. <laughs> Great. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Thank you.